I think every drone pilot has filmed themselves with their drone. But what if you want a clean version of that footage? In this video I'll show you how to use Mocha Pro to remove yourself or someone else from your shot. So here we are in Mocha and I've got my new project settings here. Let's choose our import clip. I've got my first frame here. I've got them all separated out as an image sequence which is recommended by Boris Effects and I've got my frame rate is a 30 but it really should be 29.97 for this footage and okay okay so here's our footage and there's me in there so first of all let's track around me so I'm going to pick somewhere right in the middle and let's pick an X spline and I'm just going to draw it around me but I want to make sure that there's plenty of extra space for that shadow to get around the sides so I'll draw click around and then right click to stop it let's make a few adjustments here it looks pretty good for now. Let's scroll through and we'll maybe need to adjust it as we go. So let's first scroll all the way to the beginning where I first appear. Okay, right about there. And I'll grab the edge of this dotted line and I can just drag the whole thing over. And that looks pretty good. And I'll continue on till I'm gone. And then do the same thing, drag it over. Okay, and now let's scroll through, and I can see it needs a little bit more. So let's go back to that keyframe I was on, just drag it over a little bit, and finish it off. So now let's see, it looks like we're tracking along nicely. Just drag this. And that's going just fine. So let's just skip ahead to that keyframe we had from before. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Scroll through to the end. And grab that dotted line around the outside and just drag it over. And that looks pretty good. Let's go a little further. Let's go almost all the way to the end. Just making sure I keep that shadow in there. And then we'll finish it off right here. So let's scroll through and make sure everything is encompassed. Looks like my head's getting a little bit close here. So I'm going to turn on my Uber key, which will allow me to make adjustments across the entire timeline. And let's just drag that up a little bit, to give a little bit more room. And make sure to turn the Uber key off when it's when you're finished. And now I can scroll through and it looks pretty good now. Just as long as I'm staying inside of that circle there. Okay, this all looks good. Okay. So, now that is finished, I will name that layer, not, to, not just to save my sanity, but save anyone that I'm working with who might be working with this file. I will just call this layer fill. Okay, now let's go back somewhere around the middle. And I'm going to need to make a big selection all around this whole grass area pretty much cover the whole thing. So let's 
even cover up here. And we can even go outside a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Right click to finish it off. And we'll call this layer ground. And then we'll select that layer. And since I'm in the middle here, I'll track forwards and then track backwards. So we'll make sure we've got all our settings here. So you turn on perspective. Uh, luminance is good. Uh, large motion, everything looks good from here. So let's just track forward. Okay, that is all finished, so let's go back to our previous keyframe. And now from here, we'll track backwards. Okay, so that is all finished. And one thing I forgot to do is you should really turn off any of these uh, little cogs here that you're not using. So I would have turned off the fill layer so that it wouldn't process that layer uh, while it was tracking. But in this case, it wasn't so bad. So I can just turn it back on for now. And select the fill layer and I'm gonna put that one on top because in the layer order, the things that are on top are closest to the camera. So now let's go on to our Remove tab. And the first thing I'm going to do is set up a few clean plates. So let's turn off all these visual things here. And I'm going to make a, f a couple of them. We'll make one around here, maybe. And I'll just create, and it'll save the file in my results folder. And then I'll come over to Photoshop. And we'll open our folder, and here's our clean plate image we saved. Let's close these previous images I had open. And we'll just drag this in. And there I am down there. So let's just take the spot healing brush and just paint over me, including the shadow. Make sure I get everything. And I'm gone. So now I can just control S to save. And we can switch back to Mocha. And let's make another one around this side. Just because there's so much difference between those two, we want to give it something to work with. So we'll make it around here. And do create and save. And we'll go back to Photoshop. And here's our other one. It was image or frame 314. We'll just drag that in. And we'll do the same thing with a spot healing brush. Make sure I'm all gone and gone. So control S and we'll switch back to Mocha. And so now what it's going to do is transition between those two as well as using anything it can find in the surrounding frames. So let's go back to the beginning. There we go. And let's check out our settings here. Uh, the lighting basically stays the same across the entire shot, so we can leave that at none. That should help keep things nice and fast. Uh, the blending is all good. Oh, let's make sure we have the right layer selected. Um, we can leave these all the same. Should be. You can maybe lower this a little bit if you want, if you really need to speed it up. 
Uh, yeah, so that looks all good. So let's uh, start removing. So first of all, I can just go to a random frame where I can see me, and I'll just hit this cog in the middle of the render buttons here, and I can do one frame, and it's taking a little bit of time. And it didn't quite get all of me. So let's try, let's make sure our clean plate is selected. Set it to clean plate 2. Normally it'll automatically select it. This time it didn't because I was working with it earlier. But anyway, let's set that. And let's hit the render again. And I'm pretty much gone. There's a little bit of a spot there. Let, let's see what that does. So as I scroll through frames, you'll see it does says not rendered. So if I want to see them again, I have to change this drop-down box to selected layer. So let's go back. And let's just try to render a few and see how that comes out. Render forward. And it'll go fast at first because there's nothing on there. But once I start to appear on the screen, it'll slow down a little bit. So let's stop it here just to see how it's doing. So that little black line is still there, although the rest of it is doing a pretty good job. So let's see if we can troubleshoot that. So the first thing to do is try and use clean plates exclusively, which means instead of grabbing things from around the object, being me, it will use just the clean plates. Let's turn that on and do one test render and it seems to be gone. So let's try going back to the beginning and rendering some more. And it's actually going quite fast now. And the line does seem to be gone. So let's let this render continue on and finish. Okay, it's all finished, so let's scroll through, and it looks pretty good. I can sort of see the edges a little bit. There's a little bit of weird distortion there, but it looks pretty good. If it looks bad in your shot, one thing you can do is turn these lines back on, and you can take your... Um, selected object that you're going to delete and make sure it's selected and then come down here to the edge width and just expand it a little bit just uh, dragging around in a clockwise circle and then click set and it will expand it out a little bit kind of feathering the edge and also if you want to make this more round we can make sure that everything is selected on there. Let's uh, just drag around it, select everything, and then you can click on drag on these outer blue dots out here, and it will. If you drag them in, it will smooth it out, so it's more of a round shape. 
and you can even I think I'm gonna make this edge width even a little bit bigger let's just drag that up a little bit let's say 40 ish and click set it's a little bit bigger now all right so let's hide those again and let's try rendering forward from here a little bit And I'll stop it there and it's not quite as noticeable now and frankly you and me are going to be sitting here looking right at this spot whereas anybody else is just going to be looking at the entire image and they're probably not even going to see anything down there so there you go there is our full scene with no fill <laughs> So if you liked this video and you learned something, please leave a comment below and like it. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Also, I'm on Patreon if you would like to donate to help out with these future videos. Uh, please be sure to drop a, a buck or two or more. <laughs> All this uh, software costs money. Alright, thanks and I'll see you next time.